So for now, for part two of the HENT, we're going to be looking specifically at the nose, mouth, and throat. Okay? So again, just like the last assessment, you always start with inspection. So I'm going to be inspecting her nose, her lips, and then her mouth. We're going to start with the nose, looking again for symmetry, seeing that it's midline to the face, it's not deviated on any side. Okay? I'm then going to take the speculum and look into the nose for any deviation. Lean up for me. So you'd use a speculum, which is the same um, item as the otoscope, which I'm going to show you in the next video. The only difference is the head. So the head actually points up, so you can see into the nose. Then it'll turn on the light, and you'll be able to visualize the nasal septum. Okay? So for this subject, her nasal septum is not deviated. Deviation might you know, occur in people who have obstruction. People who have sleep apnea will sometimes have deviated septum. And chronic drug users, especially for cocaine use, you might see a deviated septum. I'm also looking for any boils, any furuncles, any type of obstruction at all, and I see nothing. Looks like she has fine hair in there, which is completely normal for the nasal cavity. Also looking for the color. It should be pink, should be smooth, okay? and I should see uh, not a whole lot of mucus up there, and I don't, so very good. Okay? Now I'm moving down to the lips. So for the lips, you're looking for things like dryness and color. Her lips seem to be pink, they seem to be moist. Okay? If you have dryness in the lips or you have some pallor, you might be dealing with maybe dehydration or even anemias. Okay? Color is also really important to note for the lips because any change in color could mean a bigger problem. So if she had a beefy red or almost like a cherry red lips, it could mean things like carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay? I see no cherry red. I also see no blue. And so blue, indicating cyanosis for that patient, would mean that she might be having trouble breathing or hypoxia. Another color for the lips, again, might be like a whitish color, and you would see that with anemias and dehydration. Your lips are pink. They look moist, and they look perfect. So now we're going to assess the mouth. Okay, so you're going to have your client open the mouth, and you're going to be looking, again, I'm taking my pen light this time, you're going to be looking for color, and you want it to all be a pink, soft, and moist, around the tongue and the buccal mucosa. Okay? Buccal mucosa meaning the inside of the cheek. You're also going to be looking at teeth in this area. You're looking for cavities, you're looking for yellowing of the teeth, or even browning of the teeth. Okay? So if you have an over yellow, it could be things like incest and caffeine, maybe even smoking. Okay? Browning the teeth would uh, mean that she might have too much fluoride in her toothpaste or water. Her teeth look nice and white. It's perfect. So beautiful. Okay. You're also going to be looking at the gums here, and they should also be pink and moist. Some differences you might see in people who have chronic allergies, it might actually show up as like a gray color. Okay. So something to keep in mind. Now I'm going to be assessing her tonsils. So when you're assessing the tonsils, you're going to have your patient open all the way. You're going to have them stick out their tongue and say, ah, ah. And if she had inflamed tonsils, you might see them touch together at the back of the throat. So what we're looking for here is the uvula to rise, which it did, and again, a separation in the tonsils in the back of the throat. One more time for me. Ah, uh, beautiful. You're also going to note any redness, any swelling of the tonsils in the uvula, any white streaks that might indicate a fungal infection or a bacterial infection, and I see none of that. Okay. The patient should have no pain when she's doing that, no pain swallowing. None. Finally, I'm going to look at the tongue itself. Go ahead and stick out your tongue and move it up and down. Perfect. Okay, move it side to side. Okay, this is actually testing one of your cranial nerves, cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. If we have any issues with cranial nerve 12, she might not be able to stick it all the way out, or it might not be going side to side. Okay. It's also a very nice pink color. We're going to look for things like smoothness of the tongue, Okay, suggesting maybe a B12 deficiency. We're also going to be looking for that beefy red tongue, which also is a B12 problem. But she has none of that. It is, again, pink and moist, just how it should be. The final thing we're going to inspect in the mouth is we're going to look for abnormalities such as candidiasis, which would be a yeast. Okay? Also noted as thrush when it's in the mouth. The difference for candidiasis versus something like coplic spots, which would be an indication for measles in children, is candidiasis is going to look more cottage cheesy and it's going to be able to scrape off of the tongue if she had that yeast infection. And you don't, so you're perfect. So just some abnormalities you might see inside the mouth.